I'm very excited to get to talk to you and share some of my knowledge about the anatomy of deer with you. So I'm going to focus in on what is CWD, so chronic wasting disease, and I have six main points. Um, so it starts with who actually contracts this disease, right? Then into what is it caused by these prions? How does it spread within deer and in the environment? Where is it inside the animal, right? So the anatomy of that and how does it spread inside of um, the deer? And then why? Why is there a need for this kind of event, for awareness and for education about CWD? And partly it's because, yes, animal health does impact and influence human activities. We also have a ton of amazing resources for you to take advantage of, those from today, but also our websites. And knowledge means power, right? So the more we know about something, the better the understanding we can get, the less fear we have, and the more we can go forward and make better decisions for our lives. All right, so this first portion is getting to the who and what, right? So what is CWD? It is a progressive and fatal disease due to these abnormal prion proteins. So an abnormal protein would be misshapen or misfolded. It occurs in members of the deer family, so oftentimes we'll hear them called cervids, right? We might also all call them deer, right? And these are examples. They're relatively familiar. Most of these you would see in Minnesota, maybe in surrounding states or provinces in Canada, but whitetail, mules, elk, and moose, right? So those kinds of representatives of the deer family. Next, we need to set down the baseline of what is a prion. So prions are actually normally found in all mammals, right? So they'd be found inside and along the tissues and the cells of mammals in any situation, right? And these prions are not bacteria or viruses, they are a protein. For me, as an educator, how I approach this is I look at this 3D representation and I'm like, what could I actually understand, how could I explain this to the general public? And so that's why we have slinkies. So everyone gets to, well, there's probably not enough slinkies for everyone, but this is a good representation. I see springs, right? I see springs inside of this model. And this is, what do you do with a slinky? How does it normally move, right? Back and forth, gently glides, normal functioning, right? Okay, so here's our normal prion protein found in all of our cells, right? So we have that. What happens when we have CWD prion proteins? They actually misfold, right? So now, in this case, we take our normal deer prion protein, and it can turn into a very different shaped and misfolded piece of protein. So here, this one is very stretched, right? It's got lots of different curves, it may be looking kind of dented, right? But if we go back to our slinky rendition, right, here's our normal slinky moving nicely and normally. This is what the slinky of a CWD prion protein looks like. It is misfolded. Does this move back and forth nicely anymore? So it no longer functions like it normally should with inside the body. And in fact, because it has this new shape, it can actually clump together and cause damage inside of the cells, right? So we're gonna go back and forth, just like the slinky, and looking at this prion as a slinky. And that's why I have slinkies out there. Now we'll move into how is this spread, right? So CWD is contag contagious within and among cervids. So how might this happen? Right? We know that cervids could group up at different times of the year, so there's seasonal breeding. You might have a winter that's very harsh. You have shared resources that sometimes are scarce, so water or food. So this brings those deer together. They also, in a normal everyday situation, would be potentially passing on body fluids. Right? That's a very typical thing that you might encounter, right? feces, urine, or saliva, and those organisms can pass them among each other. So those are all potential exposure points within and among deer themselves. Now let's take this and look at it in more of an environmental look and in a cyclical fashion. So say this top image is a deer that's CWD positive. It urinates 
it happens to urinate, again, in its environment, so near a water source, vegetation, there's soil there. So we have the potential that these CWD prions from that infected individual are now in the environment, right? And they could be there for quite a long time. Now we have say a healthy deer come along into that same environment, that shared resource, they happen to ingest some of those CWD prions. So here's our misfolded prion in the center there, right? So now that misfolded prion could get inside of that healthy deer, right? And we start the cycle over again where the um, prions are now actually contacting normal prions and making them misfold. So there's kind of a domino effect Right? If an abnormal prion meets a normal one, it will turn that normal one into a misfolded or non-functional prion. So we begin the cycle again, and this continues in the environment and is spread among the deer as well. All right, so me as the anatomist, I'm starting to think, all right, so we're spreading in the environment, we're spreading between the animals, how does this get into the animal? Right? So the primary route is actually by ingestion. So if we look inside the deer, we would look at it's going to eat food, and those prions could be in it. It's going to go through the esophagus or the food tube, down into the stomach, and that make its way into the intestinal tract. So the digestive tract is the way in which these prions can get into the body. So that's that primary route. Once it's inside the body, we actually find it in lymphatic tissues, so the tissues that you would think about with immunity, right? So how you would fight off infection. It's also in nerve tissues, right? So what are some examples of those two types of tissues? Here on this side, we have our lymph tissues. Typically, you think of lymph nodes. So everyone, if you had a head cold or you have a recent um, infection, you could probably feel your lymph nodes. You may have felt your lymph nodes, your neck gets swollen. So those are um, features, those lymph nodes are in all of us. And in the deer, that's a place where prions can collect, the CWD prions can collect. It can collect in the spleen, that's an internal organ, so it's by the small and large intestine inside the body. But if you have been uh, in the state, you probably are aware or if you've tried to um, hunt a deer in a CWD positive region, you've probably heard of this particular lymph node, the retropharyngeals or retros. This is actually an image of one. It's just over the size of a nickel and it's up by the neck, right? So again, if you've had any exposure to some of the videos on the DNR or you're a hunter or you are in the cervid industry, you've probably heard of those particular lymph nodes. As far as in the nervous system tissue, we can focus in on things like very tiny little nerves that are next to our intestines, right? We need innervation to those organs to help them move food. Those nerves are part of this system. We also have the spinal cord, right? So that's that large unit that takes everything from the body up to the brain. And then obviously the brain itself. So here we're seeing the actual brain of a white-tailed deer. All right, so once we're in each of those systems, how does this CWD prion move and flow into the rest of the body? Well, if we look specifically at the lymph nodes, remember the first ones I talked about were those retros. Those are the big ones by the head and neck. There are also lymph nodes in the intestinal tract and by that spleen. There are lymph nodes near the big limb joints, so kind of like by your hips and your shoulders. Right? But all of those are actually connected by vessels, just like in our circulatory system, arteries and veins, and they can all flow towards the heart. So now we have that fluid that can be pumped to the rest of the body. Right? So the lymphatic system is this entire unit that we'd be collecting these CWD prions. Now let's look at the nervous system tissues. Right? So we already mentioned that we have these nerves along the small intestines. Right? They're kind of um, interacting with all the little muscles and tissues in the digestive tract. They actually communicate with the spinal cord and then that follows up and into the brain. So we actually have a pathway from that digestive tract to the spinal cord and eventually to the brain. But remember, what's happening along the way? If we have our normal slinkies or springs normally functioning, but they come into contact with a misfolded prion, it now becomes this, the non-functional kind of clumping and damaged prion. Right, so there's our misfolded prion. 
in our slinky analogy. Hopefully this will help you remember as you leave today. All right, we have a wonderful animation that pulls together kind of all the part of the ingestion and then where these prions can go in the body. The CWD prions are actually the red dots or circles. They're flowing through into the mouth, the esophagus, and now into the intestinal tract. You can see them hitching a ride on some nerves and the spinal cord, and then they find their way into the brain and accumulate there. All right, so now that brain has been infected and damaged by prions. Okay, so now that we've kind of seen some of the main processes leading to how these prions could get into the brain tissue, I want to take a moment to reiterate what Dr. Larson mentioned about going to see the microscope. So Dr. Jeremy Schaefer is out here so you can see some of the CWD prion um, tissues, right, infected tissues. So if I wanted to see what CWD prions looked like in the brain, you'd have to take a slice of that brain tissue and you look under the microscope. Here, these are actually tissues, right? Our brain doesn't normally look that pink and purple. Those are stains that help us see different parts of the cells. Um, we'll also have stains out at Jeremy Station. So again, that's not the normal color of our tissues. We just need to use those colors to help us visualize it. So normal brain tissue actually would look very similar and homogenous and very consistent. So my way of thinking about this is that it is like a normal slice of cheddar cheese, right? So very consistent, very um, homogenous across that piece of cheese, right? So that would be the normal non-infected brain tissue. But if we were to look at a CWD infected brain tissue, we see what? Large white holes, spaces, gaps, or damaged tissue, right? So those are due to those CWD prions that have clumped together and now are breaking down tissue, right? Or at least clumping together and damaging how those tissues can communicate with each other. This, right, then looks like Swiss cheese, right? So again, we're thinking about, in a very interesting way with <laughs> cheeses, how these tissues can be damaged and why they don't function anymore, right? Okay, so we went way down into the microscopic view. Let's step out and look at some outward signs of CWD, right? So typically the time frame, we have a nice healthy deer here. It actually takes up to two years before they would show really distinctive external features of CWD, right? So they would look and act normal even if they've maybe ingested some CWD prions. It takes a while for them to accumulate and damage tissues enough. Some of those signs would be progressive and rapid weight loss, that the deer would start drinking a lot. It's very thirsty. And then if you're thirsty and you drink a lot of water, you probably have to go to the bathroom, so a lot of urination as well. We also have drooling, right, excessive drooling. But we also need to think about behaviorally what's happening to these animals, right? So they actually decrease their socialization with their own um, cohort or their own species, right? So they isolate themselves. They lose awareness and may even start wandering, right? So wandering around um, in not normal places. And they can also lose fear of humans. So they might actually start going towards species that they might not normally want to be around. All right, now we'll take even a larger step back and think about where is CWD, not just right, microscopically within the organism or outside of the environment, where is it in the world, right? So it's actually found in North America and globally, right? So this image is just North America, so we have a better view of where CWD has been found. It is in wild and farmed populations. It was discovered in the 1960s in Colorado. And at last report, based on this USGS report, it was in 26 states, three Canadian provinces, and then four countries um, outside of the US, right? So global. Now, if we want to know and learn more about what the Minnesota efforts from the Department of Natural Resources are, I'm going to shift that back. I think Lou's back there. He's going to be the next speaker up, and he'll tell us what's happening with surveillance and what's going on in the state of Minnesota. All right, so now we're honing into the last main points here, right? So 
there are so many aspects, as Dr. Larson had mentioned, of our human activities, our sport and livelihood, that could be impacted by this disease, right? And the ones I'm gonna list off, there are a lot more, right? So we have a lot of stakeholders who are very interested in what kind of information and what kind of research is coming forward. So those that may um, use deer portions or parts and harvest them for trade, maybe you make crafts, maybe you make something from hides or antlers, those that are about the sport, the competition, right? Those that are hunting for history, for tradition, the heritage, as we mentioned, kind of the natural history behind how long deer have been in this state. Those that are farmers that may be managing both deer populations and their own farms. Those that are wildlife enthusiasts who really enjoy seeing that we still have animals um, out in our environment. Those that would primarily rely on deer for food, right? Those that harvest specifically so they have food for the winter. Those in the cervid industry or other industries around um, deer. And then those in taxidermy or conservation, right? So there are so many threads from this central animal health issue that it impacts many, many portions of human activities, many parts of our daily lives. All of these should help us highlight why we do need this research, why we do need new diagnostics, so that we can help all stakeholders, right? Everyone that has anything to do with these particular industries can now have answers. All right, so now we're at the summary. So if you hear the letter CWD or hear about chronic wasting disease, what we would hope you would take away from today is to remember that this is a disease of cervids, that it is caused by misfolded prion proteins, that it is spread within and among deer, but also in the environment, that it is kind of impressive act by prions and that they are taking advantage of the anatomy of the deer to get to the most damaging organ of them, their brain. And that the impacts that a single animal and its populations have large ramifications for many human activities, right? But it also reminds us that we are here for education and awareness, that knowledge is power, that we have a lot of resources, a lot of researchers out there that are trying to figure out what the next steps are and so we can stop the spread of this disease. I'd like to thank, again, everyone involved. We've had so many people, so many agencies put forth efforts here to allow us to have this event and also just to do the research behind this. We have many resources, our CWD Watch um, link up there, all of these particular agencies and many more. But we do want to remind you that we want everyone to stay active outdoors, to continue hunting, that those are all, they can be safe but you just have to make smart and informed choices about what you want to do for yourself and your families. And we also want to reiterate being vigilant stewards of both our environment and our animals so that we're watching. And if you see something um, a little different, call up your local agents and have them check it out. All right, thank you. Thank you.